All right. So I made a very brave statement. I said, if you ask the Prophet to plead for you in front of Allah while he's in his grave, the check. Why? Because who, if you stand in front of the Prophet's grave in Medina, who is closer to you, Allah or the Prophet? What does Allah say in the Quran? How, is he, how close is he to you? Ah, he's closer to you than this vein here that runs from the brain downwards. What is it? No, in Arabic. Okay. What is this vein called? Akrabu min? Habli wari. Then this vein is runs down here. So the property is there in the grave. You're standing in front of it. Where is Allah? Who's closer to you? As you're sitting here in front of me. No, Allah is the closest. He's always, he's always the closest. There's nobody closer to you at any moment in your life than Allah. So what are you doing? You're standing in front of the Nabi Sallallahu and you're saying to Allah, oh, wait a minute. It's important. I paid a lot of money to come here. But it's my prophet here. Yeah? I'm going to ask only him today. But you're not aware. You don't know what you're doing, you see. Of course, you're in a kind of a kind of a state. Isn't it? So you raise your hands. So forth and so on. So remember, who's the closest to you? Nobody can be closer to you. Physically, <coughs> gently, in every single respect. And that is why your first thing that you should do is, is to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's look at Abdullah ibn Ubay. Prophet buried him after the burial. His son said, make dua. Please make dua for my dad, for my father. So Umar ibn al-Khattab was called the Prophet aside and he said, why do you do this? You know the Spanish Munah. You know, he was the chief of the Munafiks in Makkah. Why are you meant to offer him? Don't make to offer him. <coughs> Prophet smiled at Omar and said, Calm down, Omar. Calm down. Even if it means I must stand here to, make, to ask Allah 70 times to forgive him, I will ask Allah 70 times to forgive him. Prophet says, What is this? He said, You're going to say, make 70 times for a Munafik was already in Jahannam? Prophet said, you don't know, I don't know that. This is the last we can do for you. So, after the, after the Prophet made dua, they made istighfar for him, Allah revealed the following verse in the Holy Quran. Astaghfir lahum. This is a test to the Prophet Prophet Allah says to the Prophet, Astaghfirullah. Even if you ask me to forgive, ask Allah to ask, ask, ask me to forgive him. Oh, la tastaghfirullah. Well, you don't ask me to forgive him, Allah. In tastaghfirullahum, sab'ayna marra. If you ask me to forgive him 70 times, falan yak, falan yakhfirullah, falan yakhfirullah, yakhfirullah, yakhfirullah. Even if you asked him 70 times, I would never forgive him. So there are certain instances where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should know beforehand, Allah will not forgive you. The second instance that is also shirk, ariya'u shirk, ariya'u shirk. Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Riyah is shirk. What is Riyah? Riyah is to show off to people what you do for Allah. Astaghfirullah. You do what you do because people must see that you do it and they must talk about the fact that you do it. That's shirk. 
Why is that cheap? You don't care. You are worshipping for the sake of Allah, you're worshipping for the sake of people. Oh, I see me, I sit in the front half or whatever, whatever. You know, uh, I do, or they know I've you know, built a masjid, or they know I'm a very generous man when it comes to the deen, etc., etc., etc. And if you always talk about it, that's it. Why? Because you are, you, you, it is, it, whatever you do should be between you and, and you and who? You and Allah. I spoke about the Prophet earlier. Then I listened to the lectures, local lectures. And uh, I recently listened to a lecture about uh, the fact that the Prophet is alive in his qabr. We know that. But then this man went, this person went way overboard. Way overboard. And I think it's because. When I listened to him and listened to him, he didn't quote the ayah of the Quran, nor did he quote hadith from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi But his, 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 his words were sweet and beautiful and, uh, you know, inviting. So he was putting the Prophet right up there. You know. If Allah did this to the, those people, you know, whether Allah says it or not, he will do that to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi you know, giving the higher status, etc., etc. This is what the Prophet says about himself. This hadith is in Bukhari 3445. Very important hadith. The Prophet himself says, and you know Bukhari means that he said it. 3445. 3445. Hadith 3445. If you do nothing else when you go home, look up this hadith. What does the hadith say? La Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't exaggerate my status. What did the Prophet say? Don't exaggerate my status. Kama atra'ati an nasara ibn Maryam. Do not raise my status as the people of Maryam. Who were they? The Christians. Like the Christians raised and exaggerated the place of who? Isa. Isa ibn Barim. What did the Prophet say? Don't raise my status. Don't do what the Christians did. And today they call their, their, their what's his name? A, a, a God. They call their Prophet a God. SubhanAllah. Then the Prophet says, now the Prophet describes himself. He says, don't raise my status. So what is his status? How did he describe his own status? He describes his own status now in one sentence. So he says, don't raise my status, please. فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدُ فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدُهُ I am only the servant. Servant of who? Servant of Allah. He says, I'm only the servant of Allah. That's my status. I'm the servant of Allah. فَقُولُوا So say, O oh Muslims. What must you say? Abdullahi wa Rasul. Abdullahi. The servant of Allah and the messenger and his messenger. How? The humblest man at ever. And he didn't want his ummah to go down the same way as the people of Isa did. Because that is, that will lead where? It will lead us to make Allah and the Prophet on, on the same level. And that is shirk. I want to say a few words, I don't have much time left. 
But I want to erase the phone. I don't know if I'm going to live till next week or tomorrow. So my boy is worried, you know, if I make, if I do all this research and I think, what if I die on Thursday, you know, And I, I nearly feel guilty that I should maybe have done these lectures a long time ago. And I feel sometimes when I do my research, I think, I could read so little, but you have to, you have to come straight down to the truth now. No more this way and that way. So, what does Allah say about dua? What does Allah Allah say about about dua? The the, the Sahaba asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Ya Rasulullah, is Allah far from us or is Allah near us? Should we raise our voices when we speak to Allah, or should we talk in a soft?" And Allah revealed the verse. إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي If my slave calls upon me, if my worshipper calls upon me, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm close to him. I'm with him wherever he goes. Every step he takes, every look he looks, every hand shifts, he shifts, every foot he moves, I'm with him. <coughs> that is why what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, I'm a servant of Allah. I am, I, with, when his daughter, Fatima asked him, oh my dad, oh my father, while he was dying, please, you are the messenger of Allah. Will you put a good word in for me? I've told you my father, and you also. Prophet said, I will not be given special permission to ask for whatever you are to ask me for. Because even I will not go to Jannah on the basis of my deeds. I will also, like you, go to Jannah. On the basis of what? Of the mercy. Ah, all of us will go to Jannah only by the mercy of Allah. Subhanallah. And he was who? He was beloved. Beloved of Allah. And he says, I'm like you. Ana basharun mithlukum. He says, Allah tells him to say, Qul. أنا بشر I am a human being like you. You highly. The difference between me and you, says Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The difference between me and you is I received revelation, and none of you received revelation. خلاص. I'm a messenger of Allah, and I received. There's another verse about the Prophet Sallallahu Alright. Over five minutes left. There was a question asked to Sheikh Al Ghazali, that this man who wrote him the letter said that Allah looks at your intention, not at the deeds you do. Allah looks at your intention. People say that. I say it all the time. Ah, he didn't mean. He, he meant good. But he killed the man. He meant good, but he stole the food and the money because he needed food. You know, Ghazali says, غير صحيح. Not correct. فالعمل المقبول دينا يجب أن تتوافر فيه أولا أن دين الصالح. 
if you want to do something, says he, in the Sharia of Islam, in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your action will only be accepted by Allah if you do two things. The first is, you have a sincere intention. Thanian, asura al mashru'ah That what you do must also be in line with the Sharia. You can't just say, very good intention, man, but I didn't mean to sway him. No, 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 no. I had a good intention, man, and then I smacked him also, but I still had a good intention. Falamal al Mutafaq Zahirahu Ma'ashara. He says, if, a, if it appears that a person outwardly is doing something very good, but inwardly he's not a good person. And he gives two examples. He said, the Munafiq, outwardly he may be a good person, may be doing a good thing. And inwardly also wants to be seen of other people. So inwardly is a Munafiq, outwardly he commits shit by doing what? By showing off what he does and what he gives. So, the alim says, he says, فَهَلْ فَلِمَاذَا تَسْتَحِي مِنْ وَصْفِ الْقُبُورِيِّينَ بِالشِّرِكَ He says, having told you all this about the closeness of Allah, the place of the Prophet He says, why are we so scared to describe people who go to graves to make dua as shirk, mushrikun. Why are we afraid of that? When the Nabi Sallallahu describes a person who shows off as also a mushrik. Why? Why is it? Man goes to a grave and he makes dua for the person in the grave. Ya wali Allah. Oh, wali of Allah. I want this and that and that and I got cancer and I got this and I got that stuff. So, he says, now the end of, not the end of this, now the two lessons coming. He says, it is wajib for the learned person. Wajib means fault. He must do it. And Yarmuk Hadir, the Wasulat, he says, to regard all these turning away from Allah to somebody else as contemptuous. You should look at it as look at it and spit on it. That you turn away from Allah and you turn to somebody else for asking what you have to ask Allah. Dua is ibadah. You want to say, well, it's just a dua. Just a dua. I'm just asking him. I'm just asking him. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, And in another hadith he said, Addu'a'u huan ibadah. Prophet Sallallahu said, Dua is ibadah. Not is look like an ibadah. No. Dua is ibadah because dua you make for who? To who? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma. What do you say? Oh Allah. Allahumma. Oh. And he says, the people of knowledge should exert themselves in teaching those teaching those who are astray to come into the haq. One of the worst sins a Muslim can commit is to see something, his brother doing something with his shirk. Maybe, you know, he's not doing shirk, he's... Or he's blatantly going against the sunnah and you say nothing. You say nothing. You say nothing. Oh, it's my neighbor. Oh, it's my brother in law Oh, I work with him. Oh, he's my boss. Oh, he's my... Whatever it is. He says we must tell the people what the truth is. What do we do today? Do today? We say, uh, it's alright, man. Leave him alone, you know. It's okay, leave him alone, you know. And 
He says, it is haram for us to leave a jahad, the ignorant person, destroying his aqidah, his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are just witnesses. We just witnesses. And he says, what crime is greater, he says, than a doctor who knows his patient is very, very ill. And he does not tell him that he's, he's, got a, he's got a terminal illness. And does not tell him that he has the medicine for that terminal illness. He says to his, to, to his, to his, uh, to his patient, Do that, he's all right, man. You want him to find nothing wrong with you. Is there a greater sin that the person can commit? So the greatest sin that we commit is we see the person is ill. He's ill in his what? In his iman. And we say, so may Allah SWT give us that strength. To inshallah, I know it's not easy. I know I've gone through it. I know, I know it's gone through so many times. I stand in, I think. <coughs> what must I say? And Alhamdulillah, I've come to the conclusion that the best thing is to tell the truth. In a very nice way. Now you know the truth, you know where it comes from. So you can tell him, what I'm saying to you, my brother, is in the Quran and it's in the Sunnah. If you want to tell him to listen to this tape, whatever you must try in your capacity to save people from going away, from going to Jahannam. Imagine you save one person from going to Jahannam. Imagine you stand in front of Allah one day and this one man comes in and says, Ya Allah, he saved me from Jahannam. I'm going to Jahannam. Please let him also go to Jahannam. This dunya is nothing man. Nothing. Wow, the, everything, the friendships, the scaredness, you're scared, you're afraid. It's nothing. It's nothing compared to the Akhirah. It's nothing compared to that one deed can turn your whole Akhirah into Jannah. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Okay,